Welcome back to our webcast series on the principles of perspective projection. Uh, in this video we're going to look at how to create an auxiliary vanishing point. Um, what we'll start with is by just saying what an auxiliary vanishing point actually is. Um, in its simplest form, an auxiliary vanishing point is a vanishing point that finds us the vanishing point for a line that is sloped. So all the examples we've been doing up to now have been for lines that have been level. And if we just follow, um, say maybe find our, how we get a, a regular um, vanishing point first of all, then we can compare it with an auxiliary vanishing point. So we're going to work with a block shape here like that with a sloped top on it. Um, here we have our plan view of the object. Um, you can see the line that is sloped is going to be directly over the line that is level here like that. So both of the two can be said to have the same direction. Um, we have our uh, perspective image here and I've just drawn in the front face of the object just for convenience just to save a little bit of time. We have our ground line here, we have our horizon line here and um, unlike some of the previous questions I've just included a side view of um, our setup here just to kind of help clarify um, what's going on in our question. So we're first of all going to just look at how we find a vanishing point for a line that is level. So this line here, say this corner, uh, we know already that if we want to find our vanishing point, we just look parallel to it. So if this is the direction we're going in, we look parallel to it. And here's our guy in our 2D, and here's our guy in our 3D, just looking parallel. Because the line is level, we know that our vanishing point is going to appear on the horizon line. So whatever height our spectator is, we know that's the height of our horizon line off the ground line, and that's going to give us the position of our vanishing point, VP1. So that's how we find a va regular vanishing point. The approach is pretty much the exact same thing when it comes to our auxiliary vanishing point, only instead of just dealing with direction only, we have a new component. We have direction, but we also have slope. And how we account for the slope is we get our spectator here to basically look parallel to our slope line. And what we'll find is that by him looking parallel to it, he'll be looking at a point above the horizon line. If our slope was sloping downhill, he'd be looking at a point below the horizon line. So let's just do that. So from our end view here, we can see this is the slope we're trying to find our auxiliary vanishing point for. So we look parallel to it, and we can see we're looking at a point above the horizon line, above our original vanishing point. So there it is, there like that. Now, where we place our vanishing point, our auxiliary vanishing point, is directly above our vanishing point that has the same direction. So we already said this line and this line here have the same direction. We can see that, there they are, one on top of the other, both going back in the same direction. So we find our vanishing point when it has zero slope, first of all, and then we just find the height between the two of them. So we can see the height difference here, that means that our auxiliary vanishing point is this height above our vanishing point going in the same direction. So we're able to just measure that. So I just measure from my end view here and I'm able to place it up here at my object. Um, so that's my auxiliary vanishing point located. So this is my vanishing point for lines moving in this direction, and this is my auxiliary vanishing point moving for, for lines moving in this direction, but at this slope here, this angle. Um, now, I've obtained this height here from my end view, or from my side view here. Um, that's a you know, that, and that's a perfectly acceptable way to find your height here. Um, but it's a little bit slow. It means you have to redraw in your object out to the side, and it can be run. You can run short on the, the, your paper as well. Um, if you're working, say, with an A3 page. So one a more convenient or quicker way to do it is to take this um, triangle that's created here, and to hinge it down flat, so that when we look from above into our plan view, we're going to see this distance coming out here like that. So let's just do that here with this. So you can imagine there is our line, there's our slope line going up. Again, we can't see that it's sloped looking from above, but if we hinge it down, well, we can see this is our height here. So we basically have done what we have over here, but without having to redraw in our objects. So we've captured the same information. This is our height here like that. How we redraw in our object like so, um, can be done in one of two ways. So there's our height. Um, from the uh, end view or up that we have here, so our original drawing up here, so you either have this in the question or you could construct this. Generally speaking, you're giving it in the question. You can either take your distance here, so if we look, this is the slope that we're trying to create, this line here. We can take our distance here, and we can mark it out along here, 
we can take our height and we can come out perpendicular from our direction line. So there's our distance x, there's our distance y, and there is our slope captured here. So that's our, our slope captured as if it was knocked down flat. Um, we can continue him on then until it hits the picture plane. So there's our, or we can measure the angle, actually that's our second way. If we take the angle here, we can mark off the angle here and with our protractor. So we can continue him on and there we have our height like so. So that's our same height that we would have here. And that's how we, we generally speaking solve our questions. So rather than doing the, our side view, we're able to just get it by just drawing in this line off of our direction line, which is like our baseline in this case. So once we have that, let's just um, use our auxiliary vanishing point then to finish off the question. So we just take our front face here and it goes back in this direction at this slope. So it goes up to our auxiliary vanishing point. And from our previous questions, we know that if we want to find the position of the back corners, we project them onto the picture plane up and there is our face then completed. So that's our auxiliary vanishing point. Um, we can see it happening in 3D here and that's it completed in 3D. Um, that's the principles underpinning the likes of our auxiliary vanishing point. Our next video looks at what happens if we have objects that are going uphill or objects that are going downhill and what happens if we have um, slopes going in different directions, how to actually account for the direction. So um, again hopefully this has been of some help to you and um, stay tuned for the rest of the videos.